Hi, Ryan Anderson from the Copenhagen Tomahawks. I'm the office coordinator and head coach, and we're going to be talking about the Y stick play and implementing air raid concepts into your passing game. Okay. What I like to think with a passing play is you need to stress the defense in as many angles as possible, forcing the defense to have to cover more than one area at the same time. Here in Denmark, I see a lot of your basic 4-3 with two high safeties and either a cover 2 or a cover 4 shell. Okay? So for me, in my passing, what I want to be able to do is put stress on the two high safeties and put stress on the outside linebackers. By doing that, I'm going to create space. And by creating space, you're going to open windows and be able to throw the ball in. Okay? So with the Y stick play, and again, this is not my play. If you steal this from me, you've stolen twice. This comes straight out of the Texas Tech playbook, Mike Leach, Hell Mummy, going all the way back to the 80s. So this is one of the most standard pass plays. So how I would set this up, from strong side to weak, my outside receiver is running fade, my inside receiver is running stick, my running back is running in the flat, my backside slot is running a three-yard slant, and my backside receiver is running what we call slant returns, a three-yard slant for about two steps, and then he's heading back to the sideline. Okay? So we'll start from the play side, and we'll work all the way back to the back side and how we're going to go through the route progression. Okay? So the outside receiver running his fade. His job number one is to force the strong safety or the second high safety deep so he cannot help coming downhill. Okay? So if he's working outside release, mandatory outside release, and working deep to the side. Quarterback knows, and he knows this offhand. If this cornerback is playing off, he is out of play. We're not even thinking about him. Okay? Because if we're going to throw it to the outside receiver there, we're throwing it because we've got a cover two shell. This guy is going to sit in the flat, and we want to hit the window right back in here. Deep enough where we get some space from the corner, short enough that the strong safety can't get there. This is a bang-bang kind of play. Okay? So if this corner is playing anything off in a cover four shell or playing loose, then his job here as the outside receiver is to force him deep, to influence this safety so he cannot drop downhill to help on our next level. So where the quarterback's read is going to start now, it's going to read stick to the flat. And it's all going to be based on the movement of this outside linebacker. This outside linebacker drops seam curl flat, then we are looking to probably go right into the flat to the running back. If he drops down because he's expecting the Mike linebacker to drop over the top or anything like that, we want to hit the stick right behind him. And what I tell these guys as well, as this, this guy is dropping, you want to sit behind him. So you want to get into your break at about five yards and find space right behind him so the quarterback, if he wants, can throw you open by throwing it more into the lane right here. Because okay, this Mike linebacker is not going to get over there fast enough to stop this play. So right now we put him in a two-level conflict. He's got to think, do I sit and take away the stick or do I take away the flat? Okay? So that's that. Well, let's say, for example, he comes down, but we get help here. Okay? Then we might be looking backside. But for right now, this is the key to the whole play. We're trying to hit this conflict right in here. Okay? Next thing, what are we doing with the other receivers? These receivers here are basically hot receivers. These are the quarterback's responsibility if we have a blitz or anything. If we see any kind of blitz from this will linebacker, instinctually, the quarterback is going to throw it as soon as the ball's in his hand, and we're going to try to get it right up in here. Okay? This receiver here, he's running his slant return. Hopefully, by coming on a slant, and he runs slants enough, this might cause him to drop down. This might cause him to widen out. Him booting backside like that is what the real reason for that is is if, for example, the quarterback for some reasons gets flushed, he'll have at least an outlet to come on the back side, or at least someone to hold the corner so the quarterback can run in here. Okay? So by creating a vertical stretch 
and a horizontal stretch, we have put the defense in a very bad position.